Hi, this is Sharan. Today in this video, I am going to provide an introduction to data science. In order to bring the practical aspects of data science, I am going to bring together the life cycle of a data science project, the different steps involved in the data science project, as well as the analytics maturity model, the different stages involved in the maturity model, and uh, going to explain with a particular scenario. So let's state the life cycle of a data science project. The first step is understanding the problem. It is really important to spend time and to consider different points of view uh, to best understand the data. The second step is collecting the relevant data. Based on our understanding, it is really important to consider all the data sources that is applicable to the data science uh, problem that we are solving and to do the analysis. The third step is cleaning and transforming the data that we use will not be clean and will require a lot of transformation. Hence, it is really important to uh, perform these activities uh, so that they can be used for our further analysis as well as those data can be used by our models. The fourth step is the exploratory data analysis. This is the most important step as this is where we are going to analyze the data using different techniques and understand what the data actually tells us. The final, uh, the, the fifth one is uh, algorithms and techniques. So here, depending upon the problem that we are going to solve, we will be using the right algorithms as well as techniques in order to solve the problem. And the final stage is uh, communicating the results. This is the most important aspects where we are going to use the right medium of communication in order to translate all the insights to the business as well as all the relevant stakeholders. Now let's go through the analytics maturity model. There are four stages in the maturity model. The first one is descriptive, second diagnostic, third predictive, and fourth prescriptive. The first one in the first stage, the descriptive. So here we try to interpret the data and understand what happened. In case of diagnostic, we try to analyze the data and figure out why something has happened. In case of predictive, we try to forecast or predict something, uh, when something might happen. The last one is prescriptive. So here, we try to analyze the data, use some advanced analytics models in order to figure out how to make something happen, how to like increase the revenue, how to improve the retention rate, uh, and so on. Okay, now having explained the different steps involved in the data science project here, as well as the analytics maturity model, uh, the different stages of them, so now let's take a scenario and then let's see how it differs with the different stages of the maturity model as well as how it is approached at different steps in the data science project. So now let's consider churn as an example. So in case of descriptive, so we try to understand how many people churned. So this sounds as a simple example, but the churn definition might differ with the industries. Let's take Banting as an example. So in this case, our definition for churn could be very simple, like customers who have closed their account. Whereas in case of e-commerce, it's not straightforward. We need to come up with something different. Uh, like for example, customers who have had at least five transactions, but haven't done any transaction in the last three months. So we need to understand the scenario and come up with the definition. So that's the descriptive analytics. So here, we do not go through different steps, whereas we try to understand the definition and solve for the problem uh, by uh, directly querying the data or getting the results from the data. So in this case, the best form of visualization is heat map. So we can use a heat map to understand how the customers are churning across different months in the year or different days across the week. So we would be able to get some patterns out of it, uh, like maybe customers are churning a lot during December, or maybe there is a lot of uh, new customers in the month of June, uh, something like that. Let's see uh, the same example churn, how it differs uh, between diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive. Uh, for all these different stages, there isn't much difference between the different steps involved in the data science project, and hence you see me combining them together. 
the only place where there would be a difference would be uh, here the step 5 the algorithms and techniques depending upon the problem we might be using different algorithms and techniques as well as the method of communication could also be different so let's take turn as an example and let's see uh, how we understand the problem across these different stages so here in as part of diagnostic we try to understand why a particular customer has churned whereas in case of predictive we try to understand like who is going to churn we are going to predict who is going to churn next uh, in case of prescriptive it would be something like how something like how to improve the retention rate for a particular customer or how to improve the revenue uh, how like uh, how to cross sell and so on so for any of these three stages uh, it doesn't differ uh, with respect to these steps involved in the data science project let's state like for any of them understanding the problem would involve domain knowledge uh, we need to understand the domain like if it is banking or if it is utility or e-commerce we need to understand about the domain like how the customers behave in that particular domain and the teams we need to talk uh, to the lot of internal teams to understand their point of view uh, so it's really important to talk with the support center because they directly engage with the customers so they have the better understanding about what's happening or what the customer is experiencing the final one is uh, directly from the data uh, so in spite of getting the inputs from the uh, from our domain knowledge or from the different teams involved in the project it is really important to uh, have no bias whereas to explore the data and understand what the data is actually telling us the second step is uh, collecting the data uh, so based on all the inputs that we have got here it is really important to identify all the required data sources uh, so uh, in a practical example the data might um, might reside in different systems for example the uh, if we take maybe e-commerce as an example of the billing might be a separate system uh, whereas customer interactions compliance might be a separate system and that could be some external data as well as like uh, like uh, social media twitter facebook all the comments so it's really important to understand the different data sources that is involved and depending upon the problem which sources is really important for us so collecting the data would involve identifying every single data that is required and using them for our analysis the third step is cleaning and transforming the data the data is not as clean as it can be directly used so it it has it would have a lot of issues like missing values duplicates so in case of missing values depending upon the extent of fit we can come up with a solution uh, like uh, uh, we can just ignore all the missing values uh, records um, by just deleting them or in some cases we can replace the missing values with a mean or a median uh, depending upon like what it is and how important it is in case of duplicates maybe we have to ignore all the duplicates that would be some inconsistency uh, a best example is date uh, date across different systems could be in different formats so we need to ensure that there is no inconsistency and uh, aggregation so in some cases like maybe transactional data like number of transactions or the transaction amount uh, we might have to do some kind of aggregation in order to suit the problem that we are trying to solve so these are all the transformations and cleaning activity that might be required uh, for our analysis the next step is exploratory analysis so this is really important to better understand the data some of the techniques that are commonly used to better understand the data or um, something like uh, summary stats uh, this is very quick uh, we can get a good understanding about the different attributes how it is being distributed and what's what's happening uh, for each one of them and the other techniques would be bivariable as well as multivariable analysis so here we try to combine two attributes or more than two attributes to see how uh, how they work uh, uh, like when we combine them and then analyze them together for example if we take maybe churn as an example we can try to understand how age of a particular customer as well as the number of transactions of the particular customers uh, uh, could impact the churn uh, we can consider like multiple attributes like uh, like age number of transactions whether they have made any compliance to see combined together do they have any impact to the churn or do they do they say something interesting 
So that's the exploratory analysis. So a lot of time should be spent on spent in here to better understand like what the data is actually telling us. So now uh, the fifth step is algorithms and techniques. So between the different stages of the maturity model, uh, the algorithms that we use would be very different. So let's go through each one of them. So let's take diagnostic as an example, like why a particular customer has churned. Some of the techniques or methods used here could be something like a t-test or correlation. So in, in case of t-test, uh, let's say we have two groups of populations. Uh, one is uh, customers who have churned and other one is the active customers. In order to see whether there is any difference between these two population, maybe we can use something like a two sample t-test. Or in case of correlation, we, we can identify different attributes such as number of compliance made by a customer as well as uh, the churn behavior to see if there is any correlation. Like uh, as the number of compliance increases, is there any uh, any correlation to the churn? Or if there is a particular compliant, like maybe compliance related to refund, does it have higher propensity for the customers to churn? So these are all the techniques that uh, uh, just a very few techniques that could help us in the diagnostic analysis. And the second one is predictive. So here we are going to predict who's going to churn. So some of the uh, algorithms that can be used would be like logistic or linear regression. So in case of logistic, we try to predict uh, whether a particular customer is going to churn or not. So it's kind of zero and one. So in case of linear regression, uh, we can use, uh, we can still use a regression algorithm. So we would be uh, predicting something like a propensity of a particular customer to churn. So it will be a probability store. So how likely a, a particular customer uh, can churn. So this could be something like an, a risk store. Uh, so it could help organizations to understand who are all the customers who are at risk of churning off. Also, it's very important here to identify the attributes that is required to be used by these models because uh, if we use a lot of uh, uh, unrelated attributes, so it becomes a noise and uh, it could have an impact in the accuracy of our model. So it's really important to identify the right attributes that would provide, uh, uh, that would be really important uh, in our uh, problem, like in our, uh, in our case, like uh, predicting who's going to churn. The next one is the prescriptive. So here we try to solve something like uh, how to improve the revenue. Uh, so in case of the fifth step, which is the algorithms and techniques, uh, at this stage of the maturity, we try to come up with something like uh, collaborative filtering in order to understand the users who are similar to each other. And based on the similar users, provide some recommendation so that can help in increasing uh, the sales like something like a cross-selling. Uh, maybe I would be explaining about this particular method uh, in a separate video. So one of the uh, like, uh, the advantages of this method is uh, it helps in improving the revenue. Uh, so there is some case studies like uh, Amazon generates 35% of their sales based on the recommendations that they provide to the customers. Uh, so these are all some of the very really interesting use cases where using the data, you can provide uh, like a very good uh, recommendation that could uh, make the customers like uh, improve their engagement or uh, uh, increase the spending. Uh, so it could be something like even in Netflix, the recommendation that they provide you. So which helps in uh, like a further uh, watch time. Uh, so that's about the collaborative filtering. And uh, so now we have covered the step five, the algorithms and techniques and how it differs at like each and every stage of the maturity uh, model. And uh, the final one is communicating the results. So in case of diagnostic or predictive, so uh, which is why a particular customer has uh, churned or like, who is going to churn. Uh, so the best uh, method for communication could be a chart. So in case of why a particular customer has churned, it could be a simple chart. Uh, in case of uh, predictive, like who is going to churn, we can make use of decision trees in order to show like when something has happened, like what might happen, like it could, it could have different branches and uh, we, can, we can understand, we can better understand like who's going to churn depending upon like what happens at different stages. Or it could be simply a scenario based. Uh, so we can try to mimic a particular scenario and explain this to the business stakeholders for better understanding too. 
in case of uh, prescriptive, uh, it should be like uh, maybe customization to the users. So here there is no uh, visualizations to the business stakeholders as such, but we try to use all these recommendations and uh, store it in a maybe database table and then use it for customization in the website or like whatever medium uh, which is being used for the interaction with the customers. So that's about the uh, problem. So we have tried to uh, go through the churn scenario across different st stages in the maturity model as well as we have gone through like each and every step involved in the data science project. I hope uh, you have got a good understanding about uh, what happens uh, like uh, from the practical point of view in a data science uh, project.